Hi, so I'm here at the airport today on an IFR day. Uh, we're, I think they're reporting two miles visibility today and I don't even think we have that. Apparently when I'm flying around and blabbering on about what I think are uh, somewhat insignificant things, you guys are actually paying attention. And uh, in my last video I mentioned that I had made some changes to the camera setup by adding some USB ports underneath the wings and was asked how I did that. So. I just took some uh, some shots there and I'll show you how I did it. Essentially these are uh, 12 or 13 dollar uh, USB plugs that I bought off Amazon um, and I should preface that by saying because my airplane is experimental I can get away with that sort of thing. Uh, if you're flying a certified airplane check with your jurisdiction to make sure that it's okay to add certain things to your airplane because some of the things I'm going to talk about here are strictly going to apply to experimental airplanes in Canada. So this is a kind of a, a two-part video just talking about adding the USB ports and I also uh, a couple of months ago reached out to in flight cam uh, about some of their products that maybe I could evaluate for my channel and for my purposes and much to my surprise they responded not only very quickly um, but very very helpful. Uh, back and forth emails trying to determine what were the, uh, the best pieces to send me what my future plans were for adding cameras and, and whatnot. They were fantastic. And uh, some of the things I'm going to show you uh, were donated to me and I, I bought a, a piece here as well. So first let's talk about the uh, the USB port. And I put one under each wing. Um, it's wired into my nav lights out at the wing tips. So as long as I'm supplying power to the nav lights, I'll have power to uh, the cameras. I'm hoping that it's going to alleviate the problem that I run into, uh, particularly in the winter of the uh, cameras dying 30, 40 minutes into a flight. Because normally by the time I hit record and hop in the airplane, get everything ready, start up the engine, taxi out, do my run up, I'm already 10, maybe 12, 13 minutes in before I even get off the ground. So sometimes my flight time on the exterior cameras is pretty uh, dismal. So I'm really hoping that it's going to improve on that. I tested it on the ground. It does seem to work. I was very concerned about turning on the nav lights, hitting record on the two cameras, and the draw that the starting motor would uh, uh, take during startup. I was concerned that that might actually undervolt the cameras and they would shut off and it would all be a waste of time. So I tested that on the ground. It worked okay. The last flight I did, I was flying along on my way back home from Salmon Arm. I was just testing different things because I had just done my annual as well. And the, we redid the electrical connection on the heated pedo. So when I activated the heated pedo, it draws somewhere 20, 25 amps. So I just turned it on, saw my power drain, it went, turned it off. And then when I got back and started editing that video, the two under wing cameras that are hooked up to the USB, both that re the recording that was being done at that exact moment uh, created a corrupt video file and nothing recorded after that. So apparently a large electric draw will have a negative effect. I'm going to try to work through that, see what I can do. The other test, of course, the other day was uh, putting them into the slipstream. Yeah, it works and I've got these little cords um, that are I don't know, 12 inches long or whatever. And uh, having these things kind of hanging out in 150 knot slipstream. A couple of days ago I did it with zip ties, but that was only a temporary solution. I think I determined the permanent solution was going to be my wife's hair bands. So these just kind of plug into the USB, plug into the side of the camera. Then I'm just going to take the, um, the excess and just kind of rubber band it around the camera so it doesn't flop around. So on to end flight cam very generously sent me some items here. Uh, the first one that they sent me was a uh, propeller filter for my GoPro 8, which is my primary camera underneath the wing. I have tried it, recorded one or two flights with it. Uh, unfortunately, it appears to have cracked the very first time that I uh, installed it. So the long-term durability of this one is yet to be seen, but it did crack and uh, hopefully it doesn't create uh, or cause me any problems. Next up, we have the audio power cable for the GoPro 3 and 4. So I do use a GoPro 3 for recording my cockpit audio. It's the camera that faces me in the cockpit. 
and I uh, don't really have any intention to replace it anytime soon because it does it quite well and the cable that I'm using got from Amazon and um, in talking with the folks at in flight cam they tell me that those cables are very noisy that this one is far superior so I'm looking forward to trying that out next up we have the uh, in flight cam pole mount this is a substantial piece of equipment it's very well made very heavy uh, not sure what it is in ounces or, or grams but uh, it's, it's a fairly substantial uh, mount up until now I've been using this uh, aluminum mount that I purchased I want to say Amazon but I think it was actually a, another website and when it showed up it had kind of a rounded base on it with a very small flat area so a friend of mine with a metal lathe flattened it off for me that goes up into a uh, one of the screws from the aileron access panel and uh, it works quite well except when it's in there it's in there and there's no you can't articulate it you can't turn it this one will work the same so the bottom part of the mount will there's a screw hole here that'll go up into the airframe then you attach the mount to it tighten down these screws and you have a fully articulating uh, aluminum mount so you can turn it you know twist it get it all nice and level that is a very nice mount and I'm looking forward to trying that out and lastly I've got the um, the tie down kit so this in conjunction with the ball mount will um, attach so basically you loosen this up and you go through one of your tie down rings snug it up nice and tight and then once again the top half of the ball mount will attach to it so it should make a very very um, snug safe uh, mount for uh, for an exterior camera if you're going to put it on a, a tie down ring I was thinking about using it for my rear tie down ring back here I'm not sure I'm not sure I want to put a $600 camera so close to the tail where if if you do botch the landing and you have a tail strike so I'm, the jury's still out on that one but I did want to try it out for a high wing airplane of course you got your tie downs in a much safer place but again you really really want to check with your jurisdiction on as to what you're allowed to mount to the exterior of your airplane you can do whatever you want and you can probably get away with it I have not heard any horror stories but I can't imagine that if you mount something to the exterior of a certified airplane if you have an accident I don't know that Transport Canada or the FAA would go after you uh, for having something like this but if you have an accident I can see an insurance company saying nope you're operating outside the, the limits of your certificate of airworthiness and I can see them giving you some grief about an insurance claim if you have something mounted to the plane that isn't supposed to be there I don't know I, I always kind of jump to the uh, worst case scenario as to what insurance companies can and can't do uh, maybe your experience is different uh, if I'm wrong hey let me know send me a comment but that's it for uh, for this uh, little short video um, got some nice things to try out in my next flights starting next flight I will have the uh, the ball mount attached underneath I will be using the um, prop filter and I will be using the new audio cable Sadly, uh, it's probably going to be a couple of days because we're solid IFR here in Kamloops right now with the uh, forest fire smoke and it doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon. So until then, thanks for watching.